All right. And now for our next speaker, Clarence A. Liwanag is an architect who fell in love with interior design and took that passion to build her own interior design firm, Design and Build, C.A. Liwanag Construction. She had her bachelor's degree in architecture at Far Eastern University and her diploma courses for interior design at School of Fashion and the Arts. She dipped her feet in the F&B world and opened a cafe with her friends, Alec and F SFC, in 2017 to 2019. She became a member of JTI Makati Princess Urdua on December 2012. And since then, she chaired numerous projects, both in community and development, national and international gatherings. In the same women-led group, she was the 2015 Director for National and International Relations, 2016 Director for Membership Development, 2017 VP for External Affairs, 2020 VP for Internal Affairs, 2021 Secretary General, and now this year, she sits as the 2022 LO President of JCI Makati, Princess Rudua, one of the biggest and most celebrated chapters. Let us all find out how she remains calm and steady on issues popping out everywhere as she discusses stoicism in a world full of hormones. Streaming live from Makati City, ladies and gentlemen, architect Clarence Niwana. Um, so who here believes in horoscopes? How about in your zodiac signs? I am a believer of this only because all the traits of an Aryan I have, or maybe some what I used to be. I am very passionate, I am optimistic, and I'm very quick to action. But of course, Aries are said to be short-tempered and we are very, very impulsive. So these traits made me a good boss, but it made me a bad leader. So diving in the construction business, when I was just 22 years old, I was unlicensed because I was a newly graduate. And of course, I'm a girl, a female. It did not come easy for me. I had a lot and um, experiences with my seniors in the industry who are undermining, who were undermining my ability. And some of our workers, as you know, in the construction, they cannot take or they cannot accept that they are about to be headed by a woman. And of course, I was very young. And uh, we had um, workers that really talked down to me because um, they think that I don't know what I was saying. And my impulsivity makes me very reactive in conflicts and those conflicts bring forth more conflicts which only harmed me and our company because of my short temper uh, my anger used to shoot up very easily and it aggravates the situation more so imagine you're in a construction setting and um i'm a girl i'm the only girl and um I used to be very, I used to shout and I used to be very, very angry. And there are a lot of men there who are construction workers and not just engineers, but also construction workers. So imagine how I felt not being heard and not being followed. So back in 2012, as you've heard, I am very fortunate to have the opportunity to join JCI Mahati Princess Urduha. Um, it's an organization that aims to create positive change, not just to the community, but also to ourselves as well. We have trainings and workshops on how to become an effective leader. But it pinched my heart because when I have heard that, I know that I was not in any way an effective leader at all because I am very reactive and I'm very short-tempered. So even after a lot of um, leadership courses and hearing the effective leadership course over and over, I still find myself being affected by every little thing and every little disturbance that came my way. So being in an all-female chapter, hormonal changes can be very, very real. 
the menstrual cycle of a woman affects the serotonin, which you know is the hormone that is in charge in balancing our moods, in stabilizing our um, moods, and lessening the depression. Aside from this monthly off-mood episode of women, members of JCI Mahati Princess Orduha are very, very empowered already. They are also assertive. And that adds to the challenge of leading them when you are like me, impulsive, reactive, and emotional. So um, years passed, and I evaded the responsibility of being the president. And I remember every year, my supposed-to-be batchmates teased me on why am I still not the president. Because life came in my way, and I find myself highly, highly stressed, highly anxious, to the point that I was shaking and panicking at night before I, before I sleep, or sometimes no sleep at all. Being sick and confined in the hospital, having very low immunity, and hurting the people that I love the most. All, all because I got so negatively affected by the negatively affected by the issues and everything problems that are coming my way. So last September 2012, my grand my grandfather, who I love very dearly, died. And it took a toll on me physically, emotionally, and psychologically. It was the middle of the Delta surge, and all our house help, my aunt, my cousin, and even my mom, are all were all in isolation. And I was the only one physically available to fix the funeral of my grandfather. So imagine, imagine me, I cannot grieve because I have to rise up to the occasion and I have to take care of his funeral. Also because it was very unfortunate that we are affected by the granular lockdown, lockdown during that time. And I was the only one present who can go out. And my grieving got delayed. It got delayed and it got delayed. And I felt like being strong is equal is equals to not showing any emotions. So I went about my daily routine. I go out with my friends. I work as the as the um president elect of JCI Mahati Princess or Duha during that time. I work as the Secretary General for the 2021 Board of Directors. I still do what I do every day, but I find myself unhappy because I was wearing a mask. And I thought, why am I feeling like this? I'm a strong, resilient woman. I'm a woman leader. I have gone through so, my, so many things in my life. But what? why am I feeling like this? I always find myself extremely exhausted after every meeting we had in JCI, and I find that I take it personally whenever someone questions me, whenever someone shares their opinion, whenever whenever someone says their suggestions, or whenever, whatever they throw at me during my campaign as um, the president, I find and take it personally. I got so affected but I was also trying so hard to not show it and be stoic. But my understanding of stoicism was very shallow back then because I just thought that if I don't show emotion, if I don't show that I'm sad, that I'm grieving, it means that I'm stoic. But deep inside, I was really, really ruined. So I was blaming the full moon. I was blaming the retrogrades, my zodiac, my raging hormones, and the hormones of the of um, my board of directors, the hormones of an all-female chapter. I was blaming them because I don't know why I was so down. And I was trying to make sense. Why am I like this? Why am I reacting like this? So one night when I was um, driving home, I felt very very lost 
I felt lost and I didn't want to go home. I don't want to go home to my parents nor to my place. I was extremely anxious for no reason and exhausted because of the mask that I was placing on my head. But no one seems to notice. And I felt unappreciated. So that night, I drove, I drove back and forth in EDSA, going to Kalohan, to Makati, Kalohan, Makati, and feeling directionless when I was in, when I was driving, um, I just, it's like an autopilot. I was just, I don't know what I'm doing. And um, suddenly a bus displaced one of the concrete barriers in EDSA. And because I was running fast, my tire hit the concrete barrier. So my car skid to the outermost lane and I had an accident. So my car went over the sidewalk and it turtled. So my instinct told me to quickly went out, to quickly to quickly crawl out, and everything went blur. Um, days after that, I suffered from depression, anxiety, and of course trauma because it, I was in a near death traumatic experience. But because I was already the elected president of JCI Mahati Princess Orduha, again. Again, I needed to overcome what I was truly feeling, that I was really sad. And I was still grieving. The day came wherein all of the negative emotions paralyzed me, and I want everything to stop, and I wanted to run away. So I was lying down, and I was searching TikTok. I was um I was um looking at TikToks to make myself happy. I stumbled upon one quote. And this quote said that every day you make choices and that you choose wisely. So it, it brought up an, an epiphany to me and I have I know that I have the power to choose. You have the power to choose. We were fighting for that in JCI Mahati Princess Orduha for women to have a choice. But it never occurred to me that I also have the power to choose on how to react, how to receive criticism, and how to receive what was life throwing at me. I made the conscious effort daily to choose well, in spite of the raging hormones, in spite of all these retrogrades and the alignment of stars and the planets, I know that I have the power to choose how to feel. And we have the power to choose this two-letter word, very short but very strong, the word no. I have heard this multiple times everywhere. A woman is not equipped to lead because we are very emotional beings. What they meant was we are easily affected by our emotions and brought down by outside factors. And oftentimes because of our hormones. How many times have you heard, And they think that that results to poor judgment and poor decisions. So it means we cannot lead. I find that stoicism teaches us that we are in control of ourselves, that we have a, an ability to have a direction, to have a goal, and to take life as it is. Stoicism teaches us to eliminate what is unnecessary to achieve our goals, say yes to what only matters to us, and no to anything else. Saying yes to everything, sometimes we think it's going to be more efficient for us, but it's going to exhaust you if you say yes to everything. Again, we as women, we have the power to choose. 
one of the cardinal virtue of stoicism is fortitude. So fortitude is not just courage, but is it is courage in pain and in adversity. We have to consciously train our minds and um, ourselves to have self-control, to set priorities, and to be relentlessly optimistic, especially in today's world. Fortitude in women is not just physical strength, which we always relate to giving birth. It takes moral strength and strength of character to be a woman in fortitude. And this is very important. Why is it important to be, to have fortitude as a woman leader? It is because our world today still looks down on femininity, on female leaders. I am not in any way a full-fledged stoic. Every now and then, I do things out of the beliefs of stoicism, but conscious daily effort choosing well, eating healthy, and accepting that life is not perfect. And of course, we cannot have it all, even if we want to. Gives tranquility to ourselves and our lives. Stoicism really helped me, especially in my leadership in uh, GCI Mahaki Princess Urduha. It's because I have learned to eliminate what I hear and what happens outside of our chapter that's unnecessary. If it doesn't matter to me, then I shouldn't be affected by it. What matters to me, which is our membership and our goal in empowering women and changing the world positively, should be my goal and I should always work towards that. I will leave you with this one quote by Epictetus, a very, um, I love this Stoic person. He's an ancient Stoic. To make the best of what is in our power and to take the rest as it occurs. Thank you very much to everyone who's been listening and thank you very much to Global Women Who Rule for giving us the opportunity to talk about being a stoic women leader in this world that's full of hormones. Have a wonderful night, everyone.